in the Rose Garden today, Kellyanne Conway, advisor to the president. She tweeted her thanks to the president earlier this week, saying, at POTUS, we'll make history as first president to deliver live video remarks from Rose Garden to March for Life, now in its 45th year. Hashtag pro-life, hashtag thank you. And joining us now is Kellyanne Conway, counselor to the president and a pro-life Catholic. The president always has not been pro-life. Why did the president want to do this? It was just a remarkable day here today, very moving to be in the Rose Garden with President Trump, who, as you know, made history by being the first president in, U in the United States to address the March for Life live. He did that through video, tape, through video, live remarks by satellite feed. And I think his message certainly was for the brave men and women on the mall marching for the 45th consecutive year, Lauren, but it was also a message to the country and to the world that he is a pro-life president and will continue to be through 2018. He made very clear today that if the United States Senate follows the U.S. House and puts on President Trump's desk pain-capable bill, he will sign it into law. That means no abortions after 20 weeks. You know, the abortion anyone, anytime, anywhere, abortion on demand crowd, they won't give in to any reasonable restrictions on abortions. And a majority of Americans, including many pro-choicers, they say that abortions after 20 weeks should not be had in this country. Nonpartisan scientists and doctors say a fetus can feel pain by that point, if not well before, and that we just don't need that procedure in this nation. The president agrees, and he would make that the law if the Senate, in fact, uh, follows suit with the House. We saw a very compassionate moment today when the president kissed a child with Down syndrome after the ceremony. People don't always see that side of him. Well, I do, and those of us, and people should look for it. They don't have to look very far. He loves being with children. He loves when families come to visit. Uh, he really loves, because he took his case to the American people, he loves now when the American people come to their house, the White House, and take their case to him. Uh, I would say that those are some of the most poignant and positive and uplifting moments for President Trump as president when he's had these roundtable discussions or these larger small group gatherings of Americans who talk about everything from how his new tax cut and jobs act will impact them to thanking him for being such an outwardly spoken and active and successful pro-life president to what he what his HHS uh, HHS bureau did just yesterday, which is to have a new conscience protection and religious freedom office so that people who object to certain medical procedures and abortifacients, for example, will not be compelled to perform them or dispense them against their religious uh, conscience. And so he, he always enjoys that. I met that same young woman, Nicole, last night at a reception hosted by Vice President and Mrs. Pence and got to speak with Nicole and her mother and her family. And it's just always so moving to see uh, people come here from all over the country, if not from other countries to come every every January on a cold day. They're there regardless, and they finally have relief in the White House. They have somebody who's listening, who hears them, who sees them, and who agrees with them that we need to build a culture of life. How many more pro-life accomplishments like those you mentioned can we see, Kellyanne? Well, it could be another busy year of progress for the pro-life movement. Uh, that Much of that rests in the House and the Senate as well. But we feel heartened that this past year the House did go ahead and, and pass the pain capable bill, um, ending abortion at 20 weeks. We feel good that the culture of life is being, is being, uh, I would say, bolstered by more and more Americans say they're against late term abortions. They are appalled by sex selection abortions. They, when the president said today, we are one of seven countries along with North Korea and China that allows these type of uh, abortions, that has to stop. And this president also is making increasing moves to upend the Obama legacy of abortion anytime, anywhere, and, and also of shoveling so much money to Planned Parenthood. This president has said, you know, why, why would the nation's largest abortion provider receive a half a billion dollars a year? So, so much of that money now, the states can decide whether to send it to a women's health center that provides mammograms, for example, Planned Parenthood doesn't, and that Women's Health Center does not provide abortions, and Planned Parenthood certainly does. It's the nation's largest abortion provider, and that's quite a cash cow for them. And, and Lauren, this country is very wise to the fact that Planned Parenthood is not just the nation's largest abortion provider, but one of the nation's largest, most active, most prodigious 
political donors and political operations. They have a full-on political operation at Planned Parenthood, and yet they're taking a half a billion dollar in taxpayer money. Thank you so much for joining us. Kellyanne Conway, counselor to the president and a pro-life Catholic. Thank you, Lauren. God bless you.